You might not have heard of a Singapore company called Vander Electric. They're a battery technology company. They make, um, well, a small dump truck. And this, the Moto Chimp, which is, well, quite a lot of fun actually. It's also electric, obviously. But now they're doing something a bit different, a bit more exciting, which is why we're here at Williams Advanced Engineering. So why did a Singapore company decide to come and work with an engineering company in Oxfordshire? Because of cars like this, the Jaguar CX-75. This is actually one of the stunt cars from the Bond film Spectre. They produced five of them to be driven down steps and lit on fire and all that sort of thing. But the reason we're here is to see something called the Dendrobium. And here it is. The targets for this fully electric zero emissions car are 200 miles an hour and a 0 to 60 ton of just 2.7 seconds. Believe it or not, the Dendrobium has been on the drawing board since the mid 1990s, simply waiting for battery technology to catch up. Although this is a concept, it's not just a styling buck. Williams Advanced Engineering, which is based on the same site as the Formula One team, has run the CFD and designed it with feasibility in mind. If it's well received at the Geneva Motor Show, then it might go into limited production surprisingly soon. For all that the shape of the Dendrobium is new and exciting, there are definite hints of other cars in it, LMP1 cars for a start. These lights are very reminiscent of, sort of Audi's R18. Elsewhere, well, perhaps it's just the colour scheme, but I can't help but think of the Ford GT90 somehow in the, the shape as well. And talking of Ford GT, these huge channels down here are like the new Ford GT, but without the flying buttresses. These are actually functional radiators in these rear wheel arches as well. And let's not forget, cameras instead of mirrors. Gotta love a camera instead of a mirror. My favourite bit, though, is around the back here. Perhaps the most extraordinary angle on this car is the rear, this incredible sort of waspish tail comes down here with these plates that are, you know, a bit like the thorax on a wasp, I suppose. Then you've got this big rear wing which sort of seems to float between two rear wheels like that and obviously the huge light as well. Moving down here, well you've got the waspish sting in the tail, uh, the little lights that we'll see mirrored on the console on the inside. No active aerodynamics on this car, sort of there might be on the, the final version, we don't know, but at the moment there is a huge double diffuser here with its two layers that aren't actually joined at all. Actually, this might not be the most extraordinary thing about the car. That might be the way the doors open. It is said that the doors look like an orchid opening, which is appropriate as both Vanda and Dendrobium are types of that very flower. The action has been patented and as well as looking spectacular, it should make access to the car easier. Here we are inside, once you've got over the theatre of the doors opening. And here we've also got amazing bits of carbon fibre. This actually reminds me of the, the rear of a Carrera GT and the way it cradles the engine in some carbon fibre. The leather is from Bridge of Weir, which is the lowest carbon tannery apparently in the world. This one's red because they like you to think, despite all the technology in this car, there's still a human at the centre controlling it. So that's, that's what it's drawing attention to. Nicely futuristic with the two cameras and stuff. And again, these hexagons mimicking the rear. You're probably thinking though, this is just all pie in the sky really, isn't it? It's just a car that sort of, you know, it's a concept. It's never going to see the light of day. But I think the fact that it's at Williams Advanced Engineering means that this is credible in fact. They've even set up the, the wheel cameras and stuff like that. They've done CFD on all the aerodynamics. So this is viable given the right batteries, I think. So all that's left now is just to see whether people like it at the Geneva Motor Show. Let's hope they do.